So after the no war in Iraq protest, my community fractured, but individually the desire for a better world stayed solid. I thank the 60s for that. The hippies were right. Of course, when I met Harmony Bree, she put a little love in my heart. We galvanized through that war on terror climate using comic observation as a coping mechanism. Stuff we felt bummed by and freaked out about. Black humor, heavy shit. We saw a war on the 60s. Media sowing the seeds that America was a better country before those damn hippies caused all the problems. And around the same time, Harmony turned me on to an old hippie named Jeannie Whitworth. In 1969, Jeannie was a 16-year-old runaway from Georgia. She and a friend joined a bunch of hippies heading to a festival in Atlanta. The following month, their young hippie driver named Van Wynn, true story, drove them all to Woodstock. I think Jeannie and Van's story sparked the idea of making a documentary. That was like a decade before. I mean, no doubt that when Harmony and I got to Woodstock in 2019, it's why Jeannie and Van were the very first people we spoke to. magazine photographed Jeannie at Woodstock and captioned it, the girl with a wine bottle. I sometimes think of that girl when I'm singing those 60 songs. I see her life in a lot of those lyrics. Harmony and I as a duo performed those revolutionary songs for over a decade, and now and then we flirted with the idea of forming a band. You know, like in the days before singing in a group could kill you. I suggested using hippie in the title to reboot the concept, right? Harmony wanted the word band to install the sense of community, and we both thought a drug reference was obligatory. And that was it, man. The trippy hippie band. The initial auditions were a heavy trip, man. We had some weird cats come and try out, a lot with that preconceived hippie brain mindset who mostly wanted sex and drugs, and someone to discuss UFO theories with. We did form a trippy hippie band when Harmony and I went to Oz in 2016, but it was a, a regional thing that never got to Woodstock. We just stayed on course, man, because the 60s tells us so much about where we're at now and why we're here, about strengthening, not losing our democratic ways of life. Dead men can't talk, but the establishment forgot that you can't kill an idea and that the music will play on. And man, it played on and on. It was our code. It was our message. It was our map. It was our nation. The music was us. Yeah, to spread the love, to spread the peace, to share, to have compassion for my brothers and sisters. You know, like I've never said, no big eyes or little views. You know, and I treat everybody, you know, as a brother or sister. I didn't know Van before I got into his band. Just a few years ago, I saw this picture on Facebook, and one of the replies to that was me, and I said, I know that girl, I went to Woodstock with her, and she said, I'm Jeannie Whitworth, that's the first time I ever uh -huh. knew her, and I am 43 years later. I could have been jumping in a van with a bunch of killers, but yeah. I didn't. Yeah. It was a beautiful thing finding her, though. When people take history into their own hands, it's a powerful experience. Often the first thing you realize when you move beyond the media's murky distortions of the 60s. 